Aquaba. Welcome back to my channel. My name is AC Kokui and this is What's the Wahala AC where we discuss all the Wahala from the week. So if you are new to my channel, I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown of What's the Wahala AC is all about. We discuss the biggest entertainment news stories of the week and then we give a weekly wrap up of everything else that had gone on during the week. Then we head into what's on my playlist where I discuss the songs that I'm listening to or the movies and the shows that I'm watching. I have some really good picks for today. And then I end the show with some positivity and some great vibes and I send you off with a great message to continue the rest of your week or go into the weekend. So if it sounds like kind of what you want in your entertainment news, definitely stick around. We have a lot to get to. It is actually time for our big three. Cause we the big three, don't need a big speech. We made the biggest impact. Check the spreadsheet. Yeah. So this week I would normally talk about a new album release in what's on my playlist, but this one kind of has a lot surrounding it. So Drake and 21 Savage released their new album titled Her Loss. It was definitely an interesting body of work. I would say it I've listened to at least half of it. I'm still getting through it, but it's good. Um, I like it. I enjoyed it. But there were a couple of controversial songs on there that we kind of need to talk about. So on one of the songs titled Circo Loco, Drake mentions, well, people are alluding that he is mentioning Megan Thee Stallion. Let me just read it to you. This be lie about getting shot, but she's still a stallion. That was one line. And then there was another one that said, Shorty says she graduated. She ain't learned enough. Play your album track one, K. I heard enough. You could definitely say that Drake may be talking about Megan. There were people that came out and said, like Little Yachty, he said that it actually wasn't about Megan. It was about a different person or a different situation. And some people were definitely defending the lyrics. But a lot of people were not, including Megan herself. She actually tweeted, I know I'm very popular, but y'all gotta stop attaching weak-ass conspiracy theories in bars to my name. Niggas nor hoes ever address me or at me with facts or receipts. I am clout, bitch. Keep sucking my mm -mm. Stop using my shooting for clout, bitch-ass niggas. When the F is a cool to joke about women getting shot, you niggas, especially rap niggas, are lame. Ready to boycott about shoes and clothes but dogpile on a black woman when she say one of y'all homeboys abused her. When the MF facts come out, remember all y'all ho as favorite rappers that stood behind a nigga that shot a female. People attack me, y'all go up for it. I defend myself now, I'm doing too much. Every time it never ends and this did not happen until I came out and said I got shot. That was Megan's response and like I said a lot of people were not happy to hear that lyric. Uh, a lot of people condemned Drake for it and some people stopped even listening to the album once they heard that lyric or heard on Twitter what was happening. I do think that the lyric was about Megan. Um, I'm not sure if it was but I do think that it was and if it was I'm not sure if like, I just felt like it was so unnecessary. We, he didn't have to say it. When it's something that's serious, we could just leave it alone. Like he should have just left it alone. If you don't believe her, that's another conversation. But to put it in a song like that, where people obviously learn your lyrics and go out and say them, and then you're gonna have thousands, millions of people saying this, I just don't think that it was necessary. It definitely could have been left off, especially because on the album you're talking about being pro-abortion and pro-women's rights. So, you know, you're condemning a black woman that obviously came out and said that she was shot by another rapper. It is just... It's not making sense. Also to add to the controversy of the album, as promotion, 21 Savage and Drake pretended that they were on the cover of Vogue to promote the album. But yes, as I said, they were pretending and it wasn't true. So now Vogue publishers are suing them for that fake cover. I also wanna add this. I feel like sometimes when albums are just covered in controversy, it was, it's definitely like, 
you did it on purpose do you feel like you could not sell your album without the controversy like your drake i don't feel like you have to do the most moving on to our next story if you recall kanye west was selling shirts that said white lives matter well at first he just had people wearing them and then he wanted to sell these shirts or sell more things that said white lives matter but two very smart individuals from the radio show Civic Cipher, Ramses Jaw and Quentin Ward, bought the trademark White Lives Matter. So Kanye West could not profit off of it. Nobody else who tries to use this phrase can profit off of it. Amazing. Amazing. So yes, they are actually trying to see if they can transfer the rights over to the NAACP or the Anti-Defamation League. So that will be great. I'm so glad that they did that because, yeah, I I don't know what Kanye was thinking. Again, like I always say when I bring up Kanye is I'm not calling him any types of things that relate to mental health. I'm not his doctor, but I just don't think that is, you know, you shouldn't have done it. And I'm glad that somebody is stopping you in your tracks for doing something like that. And lastly, moving on to our last story, uh, we are talking about YouTuber, Ganyan YouTuber, Ama Governor. If you've never seen her videos, she showcases her life, she does vlogs, she's on the path to become a lawyer, and so she showcases that. Uh, she also is very open about her sexuality. She shares her experiences and she is a part of the LGBTQ community. Community, which when I stumbled upon her videos I was like wow this is amazing to see that somebody that is Ganyan being this open about their sexual preference because yes historically the country is very anti-gay anti-lgbtq community so i was just very amazed to see that she was very open with this so apparently somebody reported her so as i mentioned she is on her path to become a lawyer she's done all her tests and everything gone through school and the last thing is to take the bar they are preventing her from taking the bar because some Somebody did snitch and <laughs> but like snitch on what that's her life uh, they told about her YouTube activities there and also her piercings now in Ghana when you go to law school you cannot have piercings and she does always she always hides them I've seen videos where she hides them where she takes them out every single day and it's not a problem but now they are saying that this is also a part of the reason why she cannot take the bar exam. Seeing someone like her just be open with her sexuality was, like I said, very, very progressive when it came to Ghana. And so I was very excited to see that that side was being opened up and the youth were being um, more forthcoming about their lives. And so I don't think that, like I said, I don't think that we should have an opinion on how people choose to live their lives. I know that Ghana can be very Christian and very traditional and I love my country but I do think that everyone should mind their own business. <laughs> if it has nothing to do with her job, it didn't stop her getting into school and passing school, it shouldn't prevent her from being able to take the bar. That, that makes no sense. And that is our big three this week. Let's head to our weekly wrap up. Congratulations to Salt and Pepper for finally receiving their star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. It is definitely overdue, but definitely deserved. Rihanna said in an interview recently that just because she's performing at the Super Bowl does not mean that there's an album coming right behind it or right before it. She's working on it. Summer Walker and the father to her second child, Larry, um, have shared that they are not together anymore, but they are doing great as co-parenting while Summer Walker's still pregnant and they will do great when the baby is actually here. Diddy had a birthday party to celebrate his 53rd birthday. All his loved ones came out to celebrate him, including Young Miami and his other boo thing, Daphne Joy. To celebrate Chris's 67th birthday, all her kids and guests dressed up as their favorite Chris Jenner. That's actually a really good idea. I need some iconic looks because people need to dress up like me for my birthday. 
<laughs> Safari and Erica Mena have finally finalized their divorce and it looks like Erica Mena will be receiving about $4,000 in child support every month. And lastly, rest in peace to Aaron Carter who passed away at 34 years old. You will be missed. Thank you for adding to my childhood. He actually was my first crush. Him and Romeo were my first crushes when I was a child. So rest in peace to Aaron Carter and prayers to his family. All right, that was our weekly wrap up. Let's head to what's on my playlist. What's on my playlist? What am I listening to? What am I getting into? What am I watching? I am listening to Coco Jones' new EP called What I Didn't Tell You. And it is good, y'all. Coco Jones has that voice. She really has that voice. And so I am so excited for her. And I really hope that people like give her a chance and listen to her music because like I said, like she is really, really good. So please listen to what I didn't tell you. Add that to your playlist today. As well as Tiwa Savage and Asha K for his song Loaded. It is out Plus, the music video is out. So if you haven't seen it, add it to your playlist because they are good. And the Love is Blind season finale and reunion are out. See if those couples made it to the end who actually got married and who didn't. And who may be dating. Yeah, it was good. And as you guys know, I love to end my show with some positivity and some good vibes. Today's message is surround yourself with people that make you feel good. I've just been reflecting lately about my friend group and honestly, every single person, I am so happy that they are my tribe. Like I call them my tribe because they really are down for me. I'm down for them. And every time that I'm with them, they make me feel good. I'm not going to say every time we have a great time together. You know, friends have squabbles, but we are able to talk through it. We're really able to understand each other. And I know that these are people that I want in my life forever. So if you are having a hard time feeling comfortable around your friend group definitely try and open those conversations up and if you cannot have that with them then maybe it's time to let them go and open yourself up to finding new people because you should and you deserve to have people that are down for you thank you guys so much for watching medasip pan i will see you guys in the next episode of what's the wahala ac please don't forget to subscribe like comment share all that jazz i will see you guys next thursday bye